हेलो एवरीवन वेलकम बैक टू इन्फिनिटी लर्न बश्री चैतन्य माय नेम इज़ किरण चौधरी एंड आई एम योर बॉटनी फैकल्टी एट इन्फिनिटी लर्न माय लवली स्टूडेंट्स इन दिस सेशन आई एम गोइंग टू स्टार्ट पी वाई क्यूज फ्रॉम चैप्टर्स दैट आर गिवन इन योर ट्वेल्थ स्टैंडर्ड एन सी बायोलॉजी टेक्स्ट बुक द फर्स्ट चैप्टर that i'm going to discuss of the pyqs i will discuss is on chapter number 2 sexual reproduction in flowering plant in your class 12 let me tell you my dear students as far as your neat exam is concerned this is one of the most important chapter in the entire botany and if i talk about the importance of the topics in it the very first right my dear students the first topic of this chapter which is very very much important pre fertilization structures and event in the history of neat exam from 2013 to 2021 roughly 40 questions has been asked from this particular topic yes 40 question is a very big number in a span of 2013 to 2021 so let us discuss let me show you what are the important questions that nta is repeatedly asking from this particular chapter and also from this particular topic pre fertilization structure and event so the most important topic in this chapter is pre fertilization structures and event please remember this okay and the second most is uh, definitely the post fertilization structures and event double fertilization apomixes etc but from apomixes also my dear students just one question has been asked in that span of 2013 to 2021 so most important pre fertilization and then post fertilization event so if you ask me what is covered under pre fertilization structures and event your structure of stamen anther pollen grain and its formation male gametophyte formation then formation and then a uh, pistil ovary ovules right my dear students and then formation of an embryo sac and also pollination all this is covered in pre fertilization structures and event which is the most important topic not only from this chapter but in the entire botany syllabus there is no other topic in the botany syllabus which is that important from which 40 questions has been asked from 2013 to 2021 so we are going to discuss that and i'm going to show you what are the important concepts on which nta has repeatedly asked questions so welcome back my dear students and let's start the session and i will really appreciate if you will participate in the session as well by trying to give the answer so what at max i'm expecting you to do in this session is try to give the answer do not think whether your answer is going to be right or wrong but just trying is maximum that i'm expecting you to do in this session so let's start my lovely kid and as I, always i say if you are new to this channel and haven't subscribed to infinity learn my dear students do consider subscribing to infinity learn neat channel for more such videos in future next so this is the very first question my kids and this question was asked in one of the latest neat 2021 in water hyacinth and water lily these are the two important plants pollination takes place by so in this question the nt is trying to ask in plants in aquatic plants these are aquatic plants these are aquatic plants so in such aquatic plants like water hyacinth and water lily what do you think which of the following is used as a pollinating agent i am very good savita how are you my dear how is your preparation going on savita please let me know and how better i can help you in this session that also you you are free to uh, let me know you are free to convey that express your feelings in the chat box i would love to help you in whichever way you want in order to improve your subject in order to improve your botany score in the coming neat 2022 do let me know and also try this question what do you think which of the following act as a pollinating agent in water lily and water hyacinth come on guys everybody in the session give it a try give it a try my lovely kids thank you savita for the appreciation and for being so nice Okay so what about this question would you like to give answer to this question savita i'm waiting for your reply what do you think is the pollinating agent in this okay then let me help you out in giving the answer 
The pollinating agent in water hyacinth and water lily can be insect or wind. So let me tell you my dear students, this is a straight NCRT based question and there is a very important fact given. So I am showing you or I am giving you practice of one such question but let me tell you my dear students repeatedly more than two to three times NT has asked question on the same concept. That is absolutely correct Savita and the concept is my dear students. In most of the, in majority of the aquatic plants, my dear students, water does not act as a pollinating agent. Like there are plants like Wellesneria, right my dear students that you must have uh, studied also in this uh, particular chapter. So plants like Wellesneria in them, water acts as a pollinating agent. But if I talk about majority of the aquatic plants that are aquatic inhabitants or growing either inside water or on the surface of the water. What happens is my dear students, these aquatic plants like water lily, water hyacinth and majority of the aquatic plants actually try to grow above the surface of the water and get pollinated either by wind or by insect just like how it takes place in the terrestrial plants. Right? So please remember this. So although they are aquatic but they will not use water as a pollinating agent. That's a very important fact. Next question. This question was asked in latest NEET 2020. This is one of a very good question and I want everybody to try this question. This is a very good question. Come on, give it a try. Come on, my lovely kids, give it a try. It's a very good question. Thank you very much uh, Savita, I am definitely going to explain you like this how I have been explaining in the remaining chapters as well. I will be like this, you keep on coming to our platform and get benefit of whatever we are trying to offer from. So what do you think Savita is the right answer to this question, this is an amazing question. Would you like to try at least, give it a try at least to this question Savita. Okay, let me help you out in making this question simple. The plant parts which consist of two generations, one within the another. So what are the two generations? They are talking about two generations are gametophytic generation and sporophytic generation. So actually my lovely kids, these are the two generations. So they are asking in which of the following option you can see both the generations. Which of the following options you can see both the generation. So let us talk about pollen grain inside an anther. So pollen grain will represent gametophytic generation because all the cells in a pollen grain are haploid. Gametophytic generation. Now if I talk about anther, anther will represent sporophytic generation because all the cells of anther are diploid. So it represents sporophytic generation. So that means option A is in sync with the question. Question says which of the following consists of two generations, one within the another. So pollen grain inside an anther represent gametophyte inside sporophyte. Two generation, one within the other. Germinated pollen grain with two male gametes. So even pollen grain is gametophyte. Pollen grain already represent gametophytic generation because they are haploid and even male gametes are also haploid. So they also represent gametophytic generation. So that means it is gametophyte within, it is gametophytic generation within gametophytic that means there are no two different one. Seed inside fruit, seed is also deployed and fruit is also deployed. So both seed and fruit, both they are deployed in nature my dear students that means they are going to represent, both will represent sporophytic generation. Both will represent sporophytic generation. Embryo sac inside the ovule. Embryo sac, each and every cell of an embryo sac is haploid. That means embryo sac will, will represent gametophytic generation. It will represent gametophytic generation. Now let's talk about ovule. Ovule, each and every cell of ovule is actually diploid. So ovule represent sporophytic generation. Right my lovely kids, so how many options are there? 
where you can see both gametophytic and sporophytic. So option 1 has gametophytic, sporophytic, option 4 has gametophytic and sporophytic. So answer is 1 and 4. Now tell me Savita, are you convinced with the explanation? Are you convinced with the explanation? Or you want me to explain it more in some other way? You are free to ask that dear Savita. It's a good question. I want you to understand it and do not forget at least till your exam because it's a good question. So NTA in this NEET 2022 might make a question similar to that or may, may use as one of the option the important facts given in this question. Yes, it is clear. Thank you, Savita. Let's see the next question then. This was asked in NEET, Orissa NEET 2019. In which of the following both autogamy and gatenogamy are prevented? What is autogamy? Autogamy means pollination taking place within a flower. When a flower is bisexual, within a flower, pollen grain from anther lands to the stigma. What is gatenogamy? Gatenogamy means pollination will take place between two flowers. That means anther from one flower will be transferred to stigma on another flower but these both flower will be present or born on the same plant so here flower should be same right and here here flower should be same for autogamy flower should be same or you can say flower should be bisexual and in case of gatenogamy my dear students two flowers two flowers present Two flowers present on same plant. So what do you think in which of the following plant both autogamy and gatenogamy can be prevented? Any guesses Savita my dear? Any guesses on this one? Any guesses on this one? Try to give the answer. Try to think at least. Okay. Hint number two. Hint number two is both autogamy and gatenogamy can be prevented in case of dioecious plant in case of dioecious plant right so there's a discussion given uh, towards the end of the pollination topic there they says that there are two types of plant monoecious and dioecious when it is the condition of a monoecious plant just like a maize or a castor plant where male and female unisexual flowers like male and female flower like Staminate or pistillate flowers are present on the same plant body. In this case, in case of monoecious plant where there are male and female flowers present on the same plant body, autogamy can be prevented because there is no bisexual flower but gatenogamy cannot be prevented. So in case of monoecious plant, gatenogamy is not prevented but when it is the case of a dioecious plant, what is a dioecious plant? Dioecious plant means there will be a separate male plant and there will be a separate female plant. On the male plant there will be only staminate or male flower and on the female flower there will be only pistillate or female flower. So pollination will take place between two flowers which are present on two different plant body. This is an example of cross pollination, this is an example of xenogamy. So in case of dioecious plant both autogamy and gatenogamy can be prevented. Maize is a monoecious plant my lovely kid. Maize is a monoecious plant and in monoecious plant gatenogamy, gatenogamy, gatenogamy is not prevented. Gatenogamy is not prevented. Will you remember this? Maize, castor, monoecious plant. So the answer is papaya. Papaya is a dioecious plant. There's a male papaya plant and there's a female papaya plant. Is this clear now Savita? Please let me know in the chat box my kid so that I can move to the next question. But if you're still not clear, please feel free to ask your doubts in the chat box. Clear? Perfect. So will you remember this? Will you remember this? Say you won't make this mistake again. Promise me that you won't make this mistake again, Savita. Waiting for your reply. Yes, Savita. Okay, so please remember what? that 
maize yeah please remember maize is actually a monoecious plant where gatnogami is not prevented papaya is a dioecious plant where auto and gatnogami both are prevented next question this was asked in orissa neet 2019 what type of pollination take place in velisneria remember velisneria is an example of hydrophily in that also epihydrophily epihydrophily that means water will be definitely used as a pollinating agent but pollination will occur at the surface of the water where water will be helping or with the help of water currents pollen grains that are released right my, my dear student that are released from the male plant acha velisneria is also dioecious as a male velisneria and there's a female velisneria plant so the pollen grains that are detached or male flowers are detached from the plant body acha velisneria also grows inside the water they are submerged plant they are dioecious plant but they are submerged plant so at the time of maturity male flowers are uh, released from the male plant and they reaches to the surface of the water and when it is the case of a, where uh, it is the case of a female velisneria plant the stalk of the female flower is very long so with the help of long stalk the female flower try to reach to the surface of the water and come out right on the surface of the water and the pollen grains with the help of water current right passively floats and try to reach in the vicinity of the female flower and some of them do come in contact with the stigma and pollination takes place right this is what happens in the western area so male flowers are carried by water currents to the female flower at the surface of the water because western area is an example of epihydrophily so what's the answer d is the answer is this clear my lovely kids yeah savita is this clear is there any doubt in this savita is there any doubt yeah perfect next question this question was asked in odisha neet 2019 uh, what is the most common type of which of, which is the most common type of embryo sac in angiosperm most common type of embryo sac in angiosperm come on savita give it a try my dear okay then let me help you out in this one the most common type is monosporic with three sequential division how so listen this my dear students in most of the angiospermic plant what happen megaspore mother cell undergoes meiosis to form four haploid megaspores out of that three degenerate and only one remain functional now that functional haploid megaspore will undergo three sequential free nuclear mitosis that means there will be one after the other three karyokinases not followed by immediately not followed by cytokinases so as a result where there was a single nuclei haploid nuclei and megaspore after three sequential free nuclear mitosis there will be production of eight nuclei there will be production of eight nuclei now after the formation of eight nuclei there will be cytokinesis my dear students and this will lead to a formation of a structure which is seven celled eight nucleated structure that means each cell will have one nuclei but except the central cell which is the largest cell of the embryo sac or the female gametophyte which will have two nuclei also known as polar nuclei inside the central cell so this is how embryo sac is produced from a single mega spore through three sequential mitosis so it is monosporic formation or monosporic form of development of female gametophyte or embryo sac right i hope this helps is this clear savita is the explanation clear please let me know next question is neet 2016 ovule of an angiosperm is technically equivalent to this is a very simple question my dear students and then the history of neat exam yeah that's absolutely right savita and in the history of neat exam the same question got repeated twice so that's the importance it's just what you need to remember is ovule is my dear students also known as megasporangium ovule is known as megasporangium ovule is the another name for megasporangium please remember next question this was asked in neat phase 1 2016 which of the following statement is not true not true okay so pollen grain of many species can cause severe allergy that's okay uh, parthenium example is given in ncert stored po pollen in liquid nitrogen can be used in 
crop breeding program that is also correct tapetum helps in dehiscence dehiscence of anther no anther is surrounded by four layers epidermis endothecium middle layer and tapetum outer three that means epidermis endothecium and middle layer they are protective they are togetherly protective in nature and helps in dehiscence when we talk about tapetum it is actually nutritive in nature it provides nutrition to the developing pollen grain so it does not helps in dehiscence rather it provides it is nutritive it is nutritive in nature Ex so this is the incorrect one let's see the last also exine uh, of pollen grain is made up of sporopollenin that is also correct so i hope you got the answer that's absolutely correct savita this question was asked in neat 2015 filiform apparatus is a characteristic of filiform apparatus is a characteristic of pretty simple filiform apparatus is actually a characteristic of synergids synergid is a part of a female gametophyte embryo sac and in synergids there are finger like projections known as filiform apparatus which actually guides the pollen tube so that pollen tube can enter through the micropylar and it enters in one of the synergid as a result one of the synergid get degenerated and the constituents of the pollen tube that means the two male gametes enters inside the embryo sac one fuses with the Uh, egg cell to form zygote and the other the fuses with the two polar nuclei which actually just before fertilization form the secondary nucleus and as a result of fusion between secondary nucleus and one of the male gamete there's a formation of primary endosperm right my pe and primary endosperm nucleus and which is present in the central cell and the central cell after fertilization after triple fusion will be called as primary endosperm cell perfect next question in angiosperms microsporogenesis and megasporogenesis involves so my dear students microsporogenesis will leads to formation of microsporogenesis what happens in microsporogenesis what happens in microsporogenesis are so in microsporogenesis micro or mother cell which is actually a diploid cell will undergo meiosis will undergo meiosis to form four haploid megaspores four haploid oh sorry four haploid microspores microspores right now these microspores will convert or develop after certain changes and divisions in them they will finally get converted into pollen grain right now let's talk about megasporogenesis in megasporogenesis my lovely kids micro micro mega spore mother cell mega spore mother cell which is actually diploid in nature will undergo meiosis will undergo meiosis to produce four haploid megaspores mega spores which are again haploid so whether it is microsporogenesis or megasporogenesis both will involve meiosis right and microspore mother cell through meiosis will leads to formation of haploid microspores and megaspore mother cell through meiosis will leads to formation of four haploid megaspores that's that's a different thing that in majority of the angiospermic plants my dear students out of the four three will degenerate and one, only one remain functional that will help in formation of embryo sac that is the female gametophyte formation of microspore from pollen mother cell through ha huh, that's perfectly correct perfectly correct savita so it involves meiosis next question keep it up this good work savita this question was asked in neat 2015 male gametophyte in angiosperms will produced male gametophyte in angiosperm will produce male gametophyte in angiosperms will produce any guesses over this my lovely kids male gametophyte in angiosperms will produce male gametophyte in angiosperms will produce two sperms and one vegetative cell 
two sperm and one vegetative cell now let's see how this works okay uh, let me help you out in understanding this so first of all it is microspore i have now in the previous question my lovely kids everybody who's there in the class in the previous class that's absolutely correct two male gametes and or sperms you can say and vegetative cell now let me help you out so in the previous question i already explained you how microspores will be produced because of meiosis in microspore mother cells right so let's start from microspores microspore is a haploid each microspore is a potent pollen grain right my dear students so my in microspore my dear students what will happen mitosis will happen right mitosis will happen and that mitosis will not be equal right as a result there will be formation of two cells which are unequal in size so as a result of mitosis in microspore my dear students there will be a formation of a structure where there will be a bigger cell over here and a smaller cell over here so this cell is is going to be called as vegetative cell this is going to be called as vegetative cell and the smaller cell which actually floats in the cytoplasm of the vegetative cell will be called as generative cell will be called as generative cell now over this my lovely kids there will be secretion of layers in tine and exine so there will be secretion of layers in tine and exine so let's say this is actually single layer only but just to make it visible i'm drawing like this and there will be another layer known as exine right let me label it again for you so this is the exine and this blue one is the intine made up of pectin and cellulose exine is made up of sporopollenin which is one of the most resistant material known no acid no enzyme no alkali is is or no temperature can dissolve it ma'am may i know from which state you are <laughs> i'm from rajasthan is that okay sporo pollenin okay so this is exine and this is sporo made up of sporo pollenin so what is this this is your a mature pollen grain this is your mature pollen grain right so from microspore my dear students because of the mitosis my dear student there is a production of a pollen grain now this pollen grain will get converted into a male gametophyte how now the next step is my dear students the generative cell this cell the generative cell means this cell the generative cell now will undergo mitosis generative cell undergoes mitosis generative cell is also haploid vegetative cell is also haploid because microspore itself was haploid generative cell undergoes mitosis and as a result my dear students there will be production of two male gametes i hope this much is visible let me check if this much is visible is this visible savita is this visible yeah it is visible so after this is our mature pollen grain now in this mature pollen grain the generative cell will undergo mitosis and as a result there will be formation of two male gametes from the generative cell now at this stage kids at this stage at this stage you can call at this stage you can call at this stage you can call pollen grain as male gametophyte or a mature male gametophyte right so when exactly when exactly you will call a pollen grain a male gametophyte or a mature uh, gametophyte or i can say 
when exactly pollen grain get converted into a male gametophyte it happens when the generative cell divides via mitosis to form two male gamete when the structure has two male gamete you will call it as a male gametophyte or mature male gametophyte yeah so the question is when this will take place so there's a there's a discussion over in the ncrt more than 60 percent of angiospermic plants this division of generative cell into two male gamete takes place after pollination when the pollen grain has landed or when the pollen grain has landed on the stigma the stigma has accepted the pollen grain right when it is of the compatible type or right type and when the pollen germination takes place when uh, through one of the germ pores through one of the germ pore where the through one of the germ pore where the sporopollen is not present, the intine will come out from the pollen tube, right? And the constituents of this pollen grain will enter into cells. So when the pollen group, when the pollen uh, tube is growing under stigma and style, there will be division in generative cell, and as a result, two male gamete will be produced. So formation of male gamete take take place after pollination on the female reproductive part in more than 60% of angiosperm plus and in the remaining 46 uh, remaining 40% my dear students what is going to happen the male gametophyte right my my dear students the male gametophyte that means division of generative cell into conversion or or mitosis in generative cell to form two male gamete will take place within the anther that means before anther can undergo descent, before pollen grain are released this conversion will happen so in the remaining 40 percent or less than 40 percent of angiospermic plants the formation of gametophyte male gametophyte will take place within the anther is this concept clear my lovely kids everybody in the class is this concept clear kids is this concept clear so male gametophyte have two sperms or and one vegetative cell next question question was asked in 2013 advantage of cleistogamy is what is cleistogamy cleistogamy if you remember my dear students there are some plants right okay like viola oxalis comelina these are some plants which produces two types of flowers one is chasmogamous flowers which opens up in the air get ex exposed stamens and uh, pistils in the environment just like normal flower and the other types of flowers they have they produce is the cleistogamous flowers cleistogamous flowers are the flowers which never open they are bisexual they have uh, st anther and or stamen and pistil in it but they never opens at all they remain closed always so there is no dependence on any pollinating agents my dear students pollination will definitely take place there's assurance of pollination and there's assurance of seed formation as well so the advantage of cleistogamy is definitely no dependence on pollinate pollination and they they show 100 percent autogamy or self-pollination because there is no chance of any other pollen grain from any other source to come and do pollination or do land on the stigma because it is not going to open at all right kids if there is any doubt do let me know in the chat box next question this was asked in need 2013 which one of the following statement is actually correct so let me help you out in reading it endothesium produces the microspores no sporogenous cells helps in which get converted into megaspore mother cell and then microspores through meiosis tapetum nourishes the developing pollen that is in fact correct hard layer out hard outer layer of pollen grain is called entine no it is called exine sporogenous tissue is haploid no sporogenous tissue is diploid so the only correct one is b tapetum nourishes the pollen grain tapetum is nutrient in nature next question this was asked in Karnataka NEET 2013. Which of the following statement is correct? Cleistogamous flowers are always autogamous, right? That means they will always do 100% self-pollination. Yes. Why? Because these flowers never opens. These flowers, this is correct. And these flowers never opens. And are bisexual. They never open, so zero dependence, zero dependence on pollinating agent and assured seed setting is seen in them. 
नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन दिस क्वेश्चन वॉज आस अगेन इन कर्नाटका नीट ट्वेंटी थर्टीन विच ऑफ द फॉलोइंग स्टेटमेंट इज करेक्ट आई ऑलरेडी टोल्ड यू एट लीस्ट फोर टू फाइव क्वेश्चन यू विल सी इन योर कमिंग नीट ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी टू फ्रॉम दिस चैप्टर स्पेशली फ्रॉम दिस टॉपिक प्री फर्टिलाइजेशन स्ट्रक्चर एंड इवेंट्स विच ऑफ द फॉलोइंग इज करेक्ट अगेन स्पोरोपोलिन कैन बी डिग्रेडेड बाई एंजाइम नो नो सच एंजाइम इज डोन स्पोरोपोलिन इज मेड अप ऑफ इन ऑर्गेनिक मटीरियल नो इट इज मेड अपन ऑर्गेनिक मटीरियल स्पोरोपोलिन कैन विद स्टैंड हाई टेम्परेचर एज वेल एज स्ट्रॉन्ग एल्कली एंड एसिड दस एब्सोल्यूटली करेक्ट स्पोरोपोलिन कैन विद स्टैंड हाई बट नॉट दस इज रॉन्ग very simple question this was asked in neat 2018 pollen grain can be stored for several years in liquid nitrogen uh, having a temperature of minus 196 degree centigrade and such pollen grains can be used further in plant breeding programs to produce plants of desirable types right kids right savita hello sunil good afternoon how are you sunil neat 2018 Which of the following has proved helpful in preserving pollens as fossils? Which of the following has proved helpful in preserving pollens as fossils? So let me tell you, my dear students, it is because of the presence of sporopollenin. Sporopollenin is the material out, uh, which is present in the egg zine, which is the outermost hard layer. or wall of the pollen grain it can withstand high temperature alkali or basic environment as well as no enzyme till date has been known which can degrade it so pollen grain can be preserved very easily for several years right sometimes for for a very long period of time excellent next question this was asked in neat 2017 functional mega spore in an angiosperm develops into so i have been explaining you again and again that mega spore mother cell which is a diploid cell undergo meiosis to form mega spore which are haploid four mega spores will be produced from each big spore mother cell will, which is which is undergoing meiosis out of the four three will degenerate one will remain functional that will undergo three sequential free nuclear mitosis to form seven cell eight nucleated embryo sac that is the female gametophyte so functional mega spore will develop into embryo sac seven celled eight nucleated because in the central cell there are two polar nuclei haploid nuclei right savita good next question Question was asked in twenty seventeen. Attractants and rewards. Attractants means like being colorful in nature, being fragrant in nature. Attractants. What is uh, a being bigger in size, visible, conspicuous, and rewards is my dear students like pollen grains and nectar. So all these types of stimulus, all these types of advantages or rewards are required when the pollinating agents are actually living in nature or biotic in nature, right? Uh, and this takes place especially in case of insects so as you can see my dear students what is the example yeah entomophily means whenever insects are the pollinating agents whenever insects are pollinating agents so such kind of rewards and attractants are required hydrophily means when water is the pollinating agent anemophily means when air is the pollinating agent so in both these cases they are non living agents they do not get attracted they do not have senses to uh, respond to these stimuli cleistogamy i already told you it is production of cleistogamous flowers which never opens at all so a is the option next question this was asked in neat 2017 flowers which have single ovule in the ovary and are packed into inflorescences are usually pollinated by this is a very important line also given in ncert where Uh, ncrt is trying to explain you anemophily right so in anemophily my dear students or the or the plants or the flowers that get pollinated via wind via air in them generally it is seen that the ovary has single ovule and the flowers are actually small so they are packed into an inflorescence so such flowers having single ovule in the ovary and packed into an inflorescence are pollinated by wind very important please remember that excellent sunil next question is 
asked in was asked in 2017 a dioecious flowering plant see i have been explaining it repeatedly now it should be smooth and simple so tell me savita what do you think is the right answer i have already discussed this already explained this question earlier any guesses my dear savita any guesses over this any guesses over this So in a dioecious flowering plant like papaya, both autogamy and gatenogamy can be prevented. Next question, good. Next question, this was asked in phase 2, 2016. In majority of the angiospermic plant, what will happen? A reduction division occurs in the megaspore mother cell. Reduction division means meiosis. Reduction division means meiosis occurs in megaspore mother cell, which will lead to formation of leads to formation of haploid mega spores. So this is the correct one. Yeah, right, Savita. Next question, 2015. Which of the following are important floral rewards to the animal pollinators very simple nectar and plural nectar and uh, pollen grains are the rewards these are the rewards colorful large size attractants right they are attractants they are not or floral fragrance fragrance colorful in nature bright in color larger in size they these act as attract they will attract but what will insect get out of uh, uh, by when they will visit the flower they will get as a benefit as a reward pollen grain or nectar next question asked in 2015 which of the following may require pollinators but is genetically similar to autogamy or self-pollination very simple it's gate no gammy. why because gate no gammy in gate no gammy pollination takes place between two flowers between two flowers on same plant on same plant so because listen this very carefully because pollination is taking place transfer of pollen grain is taking place from anther to the stigma of two different flowers right hence because there are two different flowers involved so there is a requirement of an agent pollinating agents is required or or, or may be required to transfer pollen grain from from one flower to another but my dear students this type of pollination is going to be self-pollination or autogamy genetically because both the flowers are part of the same plant when plant is same the genes will be same right I hope you get the logic. Excellent. Next question asked in 2014. Gate no gami involves right now. I have explained you this. Right now I gave you this while explaining the previous one. So can you guess now which one of the following is the right? Can you guess now which of the following is the right option now? Savita and Sunil. Can you guess this one? Savita and Sunil, can you guess this one? Savita and Sunil, can you guess this one? Savita and Sunil, can you guess this one? Yeah. So fertilization, gate no gami in, involves fertilization of a flower by the pollen from another flower on the same plant plant is same flower is different so this is gate no gami next question this was again asked in 2014 pollen tablets are available in the market so pollen grains are are proved to be uh, improving health even improving efficiency of athletes and race horses right so in the market, especially in the Western markets, my dear students, pollen grains are available in form of tablets and syrups. So they are used for supplement. They are used as supplements for food, supplementing food or food supplements. Next question, 2019. What is the fate of the male gametes discharge in one of the synergids? The fate is one male gamete will fuse with the egg cell 
as a result there will be formation of a zygote this phenomenon is known as syngamy the second male gamete will fuse with the two polar nuclei that are present in the central cell now before fertilization these two polar nuclei will 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 fuse with each other to form a secondary nucleus so one male gamete will fuse with the secondary nucleus so there will be in all three nuclei so as a result this is this fusion is known as triple fusion and this will leads to a formation of a triploid my dear students a cell a triploid cell known as primary endosperm cell and the nucleus of it will be known as primary endosperm nucleus so there will be several time mitosis will take place in that particular type of a triploid uh, a cell nucleus as a result there will be formation of an endosperm tissue a triploid tissue next so one fuses with the egg and the other fuses with the central cell no oh, wait, wait wait let me read out all uh one male gamete fuses with the egg cell and the other fuses with the central cell nuclei yeah central cell nuclei are the polar nuclei that's absolutely correct so other options are one egg degenerate and the other no all fuse no one fuses with the egg and the fuses no so one is the right one next question so this was asked in 2018 double fertilization double fertilization right now i explain double fertilization means syngamy and triple fusion so why double fertilization is in fact one of the characteristic feature only seen in angiospermic plant why it is known as double fertilization because two time fertilization is taking place one when male gamete fuses with the egg cell to form zygote also known as syngamy and the other one when one male gamete fuses with the polar nuclei and the central cell to form primary endosperm cell or primary endosperm nuclear nu uh, nucleus and that is known as triple fusion because three nuclei are involved one of male gamete two of polar nuclei so double fertilization is syngamy plus triple fusion clear savita excellent and sunil next question next question was asked in neat 2017 double fertilization is exhibited by i repeat myself double fertilization is exhibited by so let me tell you double fertilization is actually exhibited right now i told you it is a characteristic feature of angiosperm question was asked in 2019 persistent new cells persistent new cells in the seed in the seed is known as so there are some seeds my dear students like black pepper and beet what happen in them the new cells remain persistent there is remnants of new cells present in the seed in form of peri sperm so it is seen in black pepper and beet so hello uncle next question neat 2019 do consider watching the recording of this uncle i have discussed all the important pyqs from sexual reproduction and flowering plant i have already told you it is one of the most important chapter hello uncle very warm welcome which of the following statement regarding post fertilization development in flowering plant is incorrect post fertilization events they are talking about and which of the following is incorrect so let's read out ovules develops into embryo sac no embryo sac is a pre fertilization structure ovules will develop into seeds after fertilization ovary develops into fruit that's right zygote develops into embryo that is also right central cell develops into an endosperm that is also right so only the wrong thing is a next question niche 2016 phase 1 coconut water from tender coconut that actually you drink is what my dear students it's nothing but a free nuclear endosperm clear next this was asked in 2015 which of the following is a parthenocarpic fruit which of the following is a parthenocarpic fruit which of the following is a parthenocarpic fruit which is formed without fertilization parthenocarpic fruit which is formed without fertilization of the ovary a fruit which is formed without the fertilization of the ovary so it is yeah perfect it is banana banana next question this was asked in 2014 non albuminous seed non albuminous seeds mean non endospermic seed seeds in which on maturity these seeds will not possess endosperm why because the endosperm was completely absorbed while uh, the development of the embryo was taking place right so non endospermic seed so can you tell me which of the following is a non endospermic seed yes p is a non endospermic maize castor wheat all are 
endospermic seeds or albuminous seeds p is non endospermic or non albuminous excellent everybody next neat karnataka 2013 albuminous seed store their food right now i explain you albuminous seed or endospermic seed will actually store reserve food in form of endosperm nothing can be more simpler than this excellent next question this was asked in neat 2016 seed formation without fertilization seed formation without fertilization in flowering plants involves so there's an amazing phenomenon known as apomixis where you will see formation of seed but these seeds see seeds are not result of sexual reproduction they are not formed via fusion between male and female gametes such a phenomenon is known as apomixis seen in some of the species of asteraceae family and grasses without fertilization without fusion between male and female gamete the seeds are produced next is this is all these were the all important questions my lovely kids that nta has repeatedly asked from sexual reproduction in flowering plant remember the most important topic in this is pre fertilization structures and even that includes your stamen pistil i mean pollen grain embryo sac everything and then your pollination in the history of neat exam from 2013 to 2021 40 question roughly has been asked which is the most important and maximum probability holding topic in the entire botany syllabus of 11th and 12th so till now if you haven't joined our telegram channel do consider joining our telegram channel even the pdf of today's lecture will be provided on our telegram channel so the link is in the description do join it and download the pdf next till now if you haven't subscribed do consider subscribing give me a thumbs up hit the bell icon so that you do not miss out any single session in future whenever i will go live you will also be notified thank you very much thank you very much for all your support and appreciation and i will also request you do consider and always come over our platform and get benefited by these amazing classes that we are conducting on our youtube channel and also consider sharing them with your friends so that they can also get benefited right bye bye guys thank you very much that's all from this class